Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in the month of June. Let's get started. Now, this month for me was kind of a bummer, kind of a bust. I didn't read a ton of amazing books. Most of the books that I read were quite mediocre, so let's just get into it. The first thing I read was a buddy read with Kat. We read Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler. This is a vampire novel. A young vampire wakes up in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. She's all fucked up. Her body is burnt. Her skull has been crushed. She has an insatiable hunger. And she meets this dude randomly and they get together and they basically are trying to figure out who she was, who tried to kill her. Personally, I went into this book expecting a gruesome vampire novel with a black female main character and I got a romance novel with a black female character who's also a vampire. It was kind of weird and a little bit uncomfortable. I thought it was okay. I wasn't in love with it. Personally, I wish there had been more like gore, more like actual like like vampire stuff and less sort of like ooh we're polyamorous a little less of that and i think i would have really been into it if you're expecting me to remember the star ratings i gave books you've come to the wrong place after reading fledgling i decided to pick up one of my five star prediction books and that was bunny by mona awad this is a speculative magical realism. I don't even know what kind of genre to put it into. Basically, we're following a girl who goes to this really prestigious school. She's kind of one of those girls who looks down on other people for being into like overly girly things because there's a group of girls who are very like cupcake, very pink, very like ooh, kind of, and she looks down on them and they call themselves bunny. The bunnies invite this girl into their little group and shit goes crazy it actually turns insane had this book ended in a different way i would have loved it so fucking much had it ended in a way that doesn't infuriate me i would have been here for it the ending left so many answers unanswered the ending left so many questions unanswered that i like i can't not be angry. I'm not the kind of person who can read books and be like, oh, I think I'll decide for myself what the ending means. No, I want the author to tell me what the ending means because why else would I be reading your book? If you are into or you don't get angry by books that have like very ambiguous endings or endings where not every single question raised in the book is answered, this is for you. You're gonna like this. I, however, do not like that. So I think I gave it 3.5 out of 5. I did really enjoy the creepy pastel aesthetic to the book. I did enjoy that. I thought it was really, really cute. I also really enjoy Mona Awad's writing style. I think she has like a really clear and definitive voice. And you can really tell in this book that she just like, she knows what she's fucking doing. It's just the ending. The ending. The ending. I'm noticing a trend with 2020 thus far and the trend is that like I read mediocre books and I don't feel like any sort of love or attachment to most of the things I read. I had so many hopes for this year and none of them are coming true. Another book that I picked up was My Mother, A Serial Killer by Hazel Barron and Jeanette Fife. Humans. This is a true crime novel about a woman who as a child and as a young adult had to turn her mother in because she was a serial killer. I don't know if I can even say that I like enjoyed this book because the experience of reading it was kind of like meh. Like, whatever. I didn't feel that connected with any of the people involved. I didn't feel any, like, burning hatred for the main character's mother. I didn't really care about their backstories. 
about like how shitty she was. I didn't really care that like she like murdered people, which is not like not a very nice thing to say. But like in the context of me being involved in the reading process of this book, I felt like indifferent to almost everything. I I can't say that I gave a single flying fuck about anything that happened in this book. Like it's awful that that this woman murdered three people, but as a reading experience, I was just kind of left like meh about it. Next, let's talk about Pet by Akwaiki Amezi. This is a YA magical realism novel, I think. We're following a young girl named Jam. And Jam is, you know, living her life, living her fantasy. And she lives in this world where where evil has been eradicated. Ain't no more criminals, no one's being murdered, no one's stealing, everyone's super cool with each other. Until one day, Jam accidentally summons this being that she calls Pet. And Pet is saying to Jam that we have to go out and look for this monster that's amongst them. I love this so, 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 so much, so much. I love the representation. I love the relationships. I love the way that the characters develop. I love the way that the characters are presented. I loved Pet. I thought he was so cute. I literally can't think of a single negative thing about this book. Like, it's so good. It's the only five star I have for June. It's so cute and heartwarming. And at the end of the book, you might cry like I did because I'm a little bitch. It's kind of fucking me up how as far I don't think I've given any horror novels five stars, which is like really not great. After Pet, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is a YA mystery novel following a girl named Pip. And Pip is doing her like class thesis, I guess. And she decides that she's going to investigate the murder and disappearance of a girl in their town that's very it's been like very public and like publicized and everyone thinks that this dude whose name I completely forget did it however Pip alongside his brother are like nah he didn't do it and they're gonna find out who actually did it I really really liked this book I really really fucked with it it was a lot of fun it was it was really cute I loved the mystery aspects of it. I literally never in a million years would have guessed who was like responsible. I really, really loved the structure of the book. Holly Jackson writes mysteries really, really well. She unfolds everything very slowly, very like methodically so that you as the reader kind of always like wondering like, is it this person? Could it be this person? Which person is it? And you always kind of have like your little theories in the back of your head, but then something else will happen and you're like, well, what the fuck does it mean? Like, It's so good. I gave it four stars, I believe. The only thing that I didn't like about the book was the way that Holly Jackson portrayed drug users and people who deal drugs. Um, it was kind of weird. She like, she portrayed the drug dealer as if he was like poor, but like if you're dealing drugs and like a multitude of drugs, you ain't going to be poor. You're not going to be like living in a fucking trailer park with grease stained t-shirts. No bitch, you're not. You're just not. You're going to have so much fucking money. Just the way that she used the drug dealer and like spoke about them and added them to the narration. I was very obvious to see that she had her own biases against like people who do this. It like left a weird taste in my mouth. I didn't enjoy it. Other than that, it was a great book. I really, really liked it and I would 100% recommend that you read it, that you pick it up because I think it's a lot of fun. It's super easy to get through and it's like one of those books that's sort of like you're kind of like alongside with the main character trying to solve the shit. Next, let's talk about The Survival of Molly Southbourne by Tade Thompson. This is the second book to The Murders of Molly Southbourne. The Murders of Molly Southbourne, the first book follows Molly who has a weird blood condition where if she bleeds at all, her blood will create new clones of herself and those clones will try to murder her. Now, I really, really fucked with the first book. 
you may or may not know. I've only mentioned it about a thousand times. The second book, however, left me a little bit like unsatisfied, left me a little bit hungry. The second book focuses less on the action and more on the inner turmoil and feelings of Molly, which is great, but I am also the kind of bitch who wants to have like a thrill, who wants to feel like exhilarated. And the first book had me exhilarated. The second book had me kind of just like depressed and like a little bit bummed out by all of it. The ending was interesting. I wouldn't, I'm not gonna say good, cause I'm not like, I'm not crazy about the ending, but it was a resolution. <laughs> it did conclude some things, so that's nice. <laughs> I know you are. I'm like a professional book reviewer. Thank you. Personally, I would say if you've read the first one and you are dying to know what happens next, then I would say read the second one at your own risk. However, if you've read the first one and you were like, that was cool, great, I really like that, and you're not like jonesing, then you might want to just like leave it, you know? That's personally just me. I felt like I could have just not read the second one and I'm, I would have the same thoughts and feelings about all of it. Next up, we have The Girl in the Video by, by Michael David Wilson. This is a short novella following a man who one day randomly gets this weirdly sexual video and he's like into it, but like also not into it. Months following, he gets more and more of these videos, except they become less and less erotic and more and more weird and gruesome. And he doesn't really know what to do with any of it. It's like a stalker situation. This was also one of my five star prediction books and I'm like underwhelmed by it. <laughs> like I don't want to shit on anyone's work, but the, the premise is super, super interesting, but it felt like a lot of the times Mr. Wilson was sort of, wasn't going all the way. It wasn't going as far as he could go. It felt like certain chunks of information weren't given to the reader because by the end of the book, you're kind of like, well, how the fuck did we get here? Like, what? And the whole book, I kept expecting there to be some kind of like revelation, some sort of like resolution of like why all of this was happening. And for some reason, Mr. Wilson decided to give like, like the bare minimum amount of backstory, the bare minimum amount of like motivation. There's no motivation. If there's weak motivation, then it's not really that believable. Like you can do a lot, but if you don't have the right motivation and the right like kind of tension, then your shit's just gonna fall flat. And that's kind of what happened in this book to me personally. I know a lot of bitches out there really like this, really fuck with it. I just don't think I'm one of them. It's like an okay novella thriller situation where I feel like the author could have done more, but that's just me. The last book that I finished in June was The Kingdom by Minori Nakamura. This is another novella about a, about a middle-aged woman who is a prostitute and her job basically is to lure men and then drug them and steal their shit. I think she also has to take photos of them so that the people who she's working for can extort them later. The conflict of the novella is in that there's a whole bunch of other people who are working alongside all of these things who are just shady as shit and she kind of has to be really strategic in who she talks to and who she and who she like outwardly works for. Randomly chose this off of Scribd. I think it was like three hours long or something on audiobook. A super, super quick listen. And I would say worth it for the most part. The plot moves really well. The writing style is concise and gets to the point. The only thing that I didn't really love was the ending of the novel or novella because it kind of just like was like, okay, great. <laughs> Happy ending. Bye. The characterization of 
the main character, the prostitute, is a little weird. The main character for the entire novel seems to be indifferent to just about anything and everything. And when, in which case, like, she would have to be to extort and destroy the lives of these people. It kind of makes the book feel a little bit cold in a way. It makes the book feel a little bit like distant. Like you're watching a movie from like 20 feet away. You're watching a movie from your kitchen. Do you know what I mean? I think it's worth reading. The ending was weird. The main character felt like somebody who didn't want to actually tell me their story like at all. I completely forgot to mention one of the books that I read uh, and that is The Merciless by Danielle Vega. This is a YA horror novel about a girl who moves to a new town. She's going to a new school, she's trying to make friends, she's trying to be like cool and she enters this friend group where one of them is convinced that one of their classmates is like headed down the path of like evil, you know? And so like, what else are they gonna do except kidnap her and exorcise her, AKA torture her, you know? Because she's possessed by a demon. I believe I read this three or five years ago, something like that for the first time. And at that point in my life, I wasn't really into horror. I hadn't really read much horror, but I was really into it because how like gruesome it was, I thought it was. Um, fast forward to now, this is like child play to me. I can't really say that much about this because the main audience of this book is like probably 14 to 17. And I think for that audience, it's great. For young people who are trying to get into horror, this is, it's good, it's great. However, if you're already into horror and you're already reading a lot of like gruesome things, this is gonna seem like fucking Monday fucking morning. Like it's not gonna impress you that much. But I do think it's fun. I do think that Daniel Vega did what she, did the best she could with what she had, which is like a cliche basically. This book is just all cliches and I can't even fault her for it. Like it's not even that bad. It's pretty good. It's okay. I love the ending. I hated the beginning because it made like no sense and like it was the most unrealistic thing. Like these girls are kidnapping another schoolmate to exercise her and yet somehow it's more realistic than the beginning of the novel. Personally. That's just me. I'm gonna read the second book hopefully in July, if not by the end of the year. Real quick, I want to mention that I was in the process of reading two books uh, this month that I didn't actually finish, but will be finishing in July, and that is Intensity by Dean Koontz. I'm about, about I would say like 70% of the way through this, and I'm enjoying it. I don't hate it. Um, and then another book that my roommate and I were listening to on the way to our little vacation was The Inconvenient Indian by Thomas King. A curious account of native people in North America. This is also super interesting and I'm learning a lot from it, but I didn't quite finish it this month, but I will be finishing it in July. Those are all the books that I read in the month of June. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. Let me know what you read in the month of June. Is 2020 as weird for you in terms of reading as it is for me? Don't forget also to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. We talk about creepy shit. We talk about kidnapping our friends and exercising them. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye.